So far, you've run the app on the simulator. That's nice, but probably not why you're learning iOS development. You want to make apps that run on real iPhones and real iPads. In my opinion, one of the coolest things about iOS development is being able to write an app and carry it around with you in your pocket to show off to your family and friends. Don't get me wrong, developing your apps on the simulator works very well. When developing, I spend most of my time with the simulator and only test the app on my iPhone every so often. However, you do need to run your creations on a real device in order to test them properly. There are some things the simulator simply cannot do. For example, if your app needs the iPhone's accelerometer, you have no choice but to test that functionality on an actual device. Please don't start shaking your Mac. In the old days, you needed a paid developer program account to run apps on your iPhone. These days, however, you can do it for free. All you need is an Apple ID, and the latest Xcode makes it easier than ever before. Let's give it a shot. Okay, so to build and run on your device, connect your iPhone, iPad Touch, or iPad to your Mac using a USB cable. Then go to, uh, in Xcode, go to Window, Devices and Simulators, and you should see your device here and select it. Now, if this is the first time you're using the device with Xcode, this device's window might say something like, hey, your iPhone isn't paired with your computer. If that happens, you'll need to unlock your device first. Just hold the home button. And after unlocking, uh, you'll see an alert on your device asking you to trust the computer that you're trying to pair with. So if you see that, just tap trust to continue. After a while, it'll refresh here and let you use your device for development. If this uh, if something goes wrong, you might need to restart Xcode or plug the device out and back in, etc. Now you might see an error message that says an error was encountered while enabling development on this device. If that happens, just unplug your device and reboot it and be sure to restart Xcode before you reconnect your device. Now your next step is to connect your Apple ID with Xcode. It's okay to use the same Apple ID that you're already using with iTunes and your iPhone, but if you run a business, you might wanna create a new Apple ID to keep things separate. Of course, if you already registered for a paid Apple developer program, you should use whatever Apple ID you used for that. So to set up your Apple ID, go to Xcode Preferences and go to Accounts here. And this is where you can set up your Apple ID information. You can tap plus if you want to create a new one or if you want to register a new Apple ID or have multiple ones in there. If Xcode isn't able to use your Apple ID provided, such as maybe you, you had an account that had a developer program in the past and now it's expired, if anything weird like that happens, you can just create a new Apple ID. So it's free and it only creates a few minutes. Just go to appleid.apple.com and just follow the instructions here to create an Apple ID. When you're running on device, you will get an error if you try to use the same bundle identifier that I did. So remember when we first created the project, I did com.raiseware.bullseye. Just make sure you use something unique here. And anyway, once, once that's all set up, assuming you don't have run into any issues, you should be able to just select your device up here at the top and click run. And I have a recording here that shows my actual device. And uh, it is now running on my device. Here it comes, loading up. Yeah, so I'm gonna, using my finger here, move to a particular point, try to get to 16 and tap hit me. Ah, almost had it, but I did get some bonus points. All right, it's now running on my device.